Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I've got some good news. The release driver, the public driver, the first publicly available driver for Radeon 7, it actually appears to work. There's no crashing, no stability issues of any kind. It just works. So that's nice. I've been able to go back to the test bench and run a whole heap more game benchmarks. About 33, I think, games in total. Done a whole heap of resolution testing, all that sort of stuff. Loads of testing, some updated games, all that kind of stuff. So I've spent the last few days doing nothing but benchmarking. And then I spent the few days before that doing nothing but benchmarking. It's been a hectic week. Anyway, after spending Thursday wrapping up the coverage for Radeon 7, the day one review, the embargo was lifted at 1 a.m. local time. So that was Friday morning. So I spent all day Thursday getting the video sorted out before it would go live. And then I replied to comments. I watched a few other reviews from my favorite tech YouTubers. It was a, what well, was a late night, early morning kind of deal. Anyway, I ended up making it to bed around 3 a.m., but I didn't get that much of a sleep because I was back up at 8 a.m. because I wanted to hit the test systems with DDU, get rid of the press driver that was causing me all the headaches, and then replace it with the first publicly available Radeon 7 driver. AMD did inform me prior to the release of the public driver that there would be no performance improvements, but they did expect it to solve my numerous stability issues. As far as I can tell, Radeon 7 is now rock solid since installing driver version Adrenaline 2019 edition 19.2.1. I've not seen a single crash, so that is a massive improvement. Now, I did promise you guys once the stability issues were addressed that I would deliver a true hardware unbox benchmark featuring far more than a measly dozen games. Like I said, the past few days have been spent doing nothing but benchmarking day and night. But we now have over 30 games to check out, including the new World of Tanks update, as well as Apex Legends. As was the case with the day one review, I'll be focusing on the 1440p data, but I'll also provide the 1080p and 4K results via a link in the video description. For testing, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal 570X has been used, and it features a Core i9-1900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of Vengeance DDR4 3400 memory. So let's check out the results for a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll jump into the full performance breakdown which covers all 33 games. Please note, since I have previously discussed results for Fortnite, Battlefield 5, World of Tanks, Strange Brigade, Monster Hunter World, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rainbow Six Siege, Far Cry 5, Forza Horizon 4, Resident Evil 2, Armor 3, and Hitman 2 in our day one coverage, I'll skip going over them again and instead pick a dozen different games to discuss. First up, we have Apex Legends, and this is a fresh new Battle Royale style game that came out of pretty much nowhere. I'm yet to properly play it, but it does seem like people are enjoying this one. It's based on the same engine as Titanfall 2, and like Titanfall 2, it's capped at 144 FPS. So at least that aspect of the game kind of sucks, though for most 144 FPS will be sufficient. So probably being a bit harsh there. Anyway, the Radeon 7 does okay. I'd say just okay in this one. It's slightly slower than the GTX 1080 Ti, 12% slower than the RTX 2080, but 26% faster than Vega 64. So that's kind of Radeon 7 in a nutshell, to be honest. The Radeon 7 GPU does perform quite well on Sniper Elite 4, but really, who didn't see that coming? This is a well-optimized title that plays well on both AMD and NVIDIA hardware. The GeForce RTX 2080 is still slightly faster, but the margin is very small. Radeon 7 also manages to improve on Vega 64 by a 30% margin. Has to be said, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is getting on a bit now. It's a late 2016 release, but it's certainly not the oldest game we test with. Anyway, for those wondering, DirectX 11 works better than DirectX 12 for both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, so that's why we're using it. The Radeon 7 was basically able to match the GTX 1080 Ti, making it a little slower than the RTX 2080, but a good bit faster than the RTX 2070 and Vega 64. It's not the most well-optimized title to be released last year, but it's still a lot of fun. Anyway, performance in Just Cause 4 for the Radeon 7 was, again, okay. The 1% low performance matched that of the GTX 1080 Ti and RTX 2080, which is good, but the average frame rate positioned it squarely between the RTX 2080 and 2070, which, again, is okay. The Star Wars Battlefront 2 results are decent. Here, the Radeon 7 provides strong 1% low performance, coupled with a slightly lower than expected average frame rate. In the end, it was 10% slower than the RTX 2080 for the average frame rate, but 32% faster than Vega 64. Project Cars 2 is always favored in video hardware, and we see that when comparing Vega 56 and the GTX 1070, for example. 
Typically in other games, the Vega GPU is generally faster. As a result, Radeon 7 was only just able to beat the GTX 1080, making it much slower than the RTX 2080 and way slower than the GTX 1080 Ti. Moving on, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this title never really played that nice with AMD hardware. And yeah, I know, it's an AMD sponsored title, but evidently that doesn't really mean much, as this game does really prefer Intel CPUs and Nvidia GPUs. Anyway, the Radeon 7 was a big step forward from Vega 64, offering 28% more performance. Sadly though, this meant it was only able to match the RTX 2070, so overall not a great result for the new $700 flagship AMD GPU. Okay, so previously I was using the standalone World of Tanks benchmark, but since that hasn't been updated and the game has recently received a major overhaul, I'm now switching back to testing with the HD client. The game engine improvements were mostly focused on better CPU utilization, which is useful for those using low clocked multi-core processors. We however use a 9900K at 5GHz, so less of an issue here. Still, it's best to test with the most up-to-date software possible, hence the switch. Previously, the Radeon 7 was 17% slower than the RTX 2080. Now with the new version of the game, it's 16% slower. So same deal really. As expected, nothing has really changed here on the GPU front when not CPU limited. Moving on to Vermintide 2, Radeon 7 was again slower than both the RTX 2080 and GTX 1080 Ti, though it was a huge step forward from Vega 64, delivering 36% more frames on average. Then we have The Witcher 3, and here Vega 56 is able to match the GTX 1070, yet despite that, the Radeon 7 was 9% slower than the GTX 1080 Ti, and even slower than the RTX 2080. There's always that guy that calls us NVIDIA biased because we don't test with any Vulcan titles, as if there's loads of Vulcan titles and we're going out of our way to avoid them. Anyway, now that NVIDIA's latest GPU architecture, Turing, is up to speed, AMD no longer enjoys the performance advantage they once did in Vulcan-based titles. Take Wolfenstein 2 for example, here the Radeon 7 was 12% slower than the RTX 2080. But anyway, we've included a Vulcan-based title, so I'm sure that won't be a problem now. Dirt 4 is always an interesting inclusion, as CMAA enables pretty much god mode on Radeon GPUs, and we again see that here with the Radeon 7. We've previously seen AMD GPUs such as Vega 64, for example, that's able to beat the 1% low performance of the RTX 2080 Ti, and here we see that the Radeon 7 absolutely shattered the 1% low performance of the RTX 2080 Ti while delivering the same 154 FPS on average. Fair to say AMD's GPU division would be in pretty good shape if every game looked like this. Okay, so that's how Radeon 7 stacks up in another dozen titles. So between this video and then the day one coverage, We've now closely looked at 24 games, but there's another nine we haven't discussed and the graphs for those games will be available for free on our Patreon page. So you can find the link in the video description. That said, we're gonna see how the Radeon 7 compared to the RTX 2080, 2060, GTX 1080 Ti and Vega 64 in all 33 games right now. So let's go do that. In our day one review featuring just a dozen games, the Radeon 7 was 4% slower than the RTX 2080. Now, with 33 games, it's 7% slower. So, slight change there, though I did select the previous 12 titles to include an even amount of favorable and unfavorable titles for the GCN 5th gen architecture. Still, what this graph tells us is that there is an overwhelmingly good chance that in a given title, the RTX 2080 will be faster, making it the superior gaming GPU right now. That's just a fact, as much as it may upset certain AMD fans, I'm sorry guys, Again, those are just the facts. Moving on, previously Radeon 7 was 2% slower than the GTX 1080 Ti with the dozen game sample. Now it's 5% slower. Again, no major changes here, but for the most part, the much older GTX 1080 Ti was faster. Moreover, it was faster by a 10% marginal greater in 10 of the 33 games tested, whereas the Radeon 7 was faster by a 10% marginal greater in just two of the 33 games tested. Previously, we saw that the Radeon 7 was 29% faster than the RTX 2060, and now with a much wider spread of games, it's 28% faster. So again, much of a muchness here. Then finally, compared to Vega 64, it was previously found to be 23% faster, and now it's 24% faster. That's a nice little performance bump, but like I said in the previous video, you are paying 40% more for a little over 20% more performance. So there you have it. We pretty much nailed it with our initial sample of games for the day one coverage. Uh, the Radeon 7 is indeed slower than the RTX 2080 while consuming 
about the same amount of power, a little bit more in my test, but will vary depending on the settings used, the game used and whatever. Point is, it's on seven nanometers and it's definitely not more efficient than the 2080. Uh, currently, the only model available is the reference card and it doesn't run super hot, though it may run a bit hotter at a reasonable fan speed. It spins at about 3000 RPM. It's extremely loud, unbearably loud, I would put it. Uh, AMD says there is a fix incoming for the fan profile. Be interesting to see what that does to temperatures and obviously see if it is much quieter or at least bearable. Uh, but yeah, the fix is still incoming at this point. So yeah, it's just a promise for now. So not going to read too much into that. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see and then retest it when we do get that fix. But the good news is for now or going forward, the stability issues are solved. So basically that was just an issue with the early press release driver. Sometimes they can be a bit buggy. Unfortunately, this one was a bit of a shocker. But the good news is, as I said, anyone who managed to get one of these uh, will not have run into the problems we did. So yeah, good stuff. I'm still also yet to delve into any overclocking and or undervolting, but it is something I'm really keen to check out. I know a lot of you guys have been requesting it in the comments and yeah, I will get to that very soon. For now, I really just wanted to establish how the Radeon 7 stacks up in a massive range of games. And well, yeah, we've obviously done that now. Also for the guys screaming immature drivers, AMD does believe that the Radeon 7 is performing as it should be. But of course, as always, as we've always done and will continue to do, I will benchmark the fans off any new graphics card. Though for this one, it might not take too much benchmarking before they shoot off and ricochet all around my test system. But seriously, at this point, you really don't need to demand more benchmarks from us. You should just know they're happening whether you bloody well like it or not. As for the Radeon 7, not too much more needs to be said at this point, really. If you felt our day one review was too harsh, well, upon reflection, I don't. We reviewed it exclusively as a gaming product, as we always do with graphics cards, and frankly, they're at under-delivered. If it happened to be more efficient than the RTX 2080 and ran really quiet, I'd deem it a worthy alternative. But let's not sugarcoat this or beat around the bush. It's not as efficient, it's loud, and for the most part, it's slower. Only a little slower, but it is slower. And if for some reason you think we're Nvidia shills or something crazy like that, I would urge you to go back and watch our day one RTX 2080 and 2070 coverage because it was not favorable, but the Radeon 7 has managed to make the RTX 2080 look pretty good in today's climate. So for all those reasons, I can't recommend the Radeon 7 over the GeForce RTX 2080. As badly as I wanted the 2080 to be obliterated by this very graphics card, forcing Nvidia to get real with their pricing, that obviously hasn't happened. Therefore, it seems gamers are forced to pay 2016 pricing for 2016 performance. So yeah, that sucks. Let's just hope and pray that things improve later in the year. For now, that is gonna do it. I may make a replying to comments episode uh, surrounding, well, this video, the previous video, basically my Radeon 7 content. So if you have a good question or anything along those lines, then feel free to drop that below and I'll do my best to include it in that upcoming reply in the comments video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the word of Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time. <laughs>